Good evening and greetings, everyone. Welcome back to Blogging Tawheed. It's been very difficult and challenging for a lot of my Christian brothers and sisters to understand the concept of God the Almighty, when in fact their own Bible says God is not a man. Yet the difficult problems that come with some biblical verses, such as John chapter 1 verse 14, are things that need to be discussed. And I'm here to shed some light on these passages that seem to be somehow complicated and confusing. And I don't shy around the fact that it is complicated for a lot of grown-up Christians. Five years old kids, however, don't have that issue. They understand who God is. Thanks to the natural disposition that God the Almighty instilled in human beings. Where's Jesus? As Jesus grew up, he learned more and more about God. His... Jesus is God. How can you learn more and more about himself? I'm going to help you understand and grasp what is actually being stated in these passages. Because people are trying to figure out who is this Logos? What does it mean? John chapter 1 verse 14, the famous climatic part of the prologue, which says, and the word became flesh. Throughout my series of the historical Jesus, I've been demonstrating that this word here is the personification of Jesus. So ultimately, we see that the logos in John chapter 1 verse 14, God's word becomes flesh. If you say the logos, that is the word becomes flesh, that's correct. We agree. The word, the logos, is from God that became flesh. That makes perfect sense. The logos becomes embodied into the human being as it's supposed to be that we know as Jesus the Messiah, son of Mary. Jesus walks around and functions as the Logos, the word from God the Almighty. Every prophet and a messenger that walked on this earth was embodied as the Logos in flesh, a word from God, a plan from God. But the Logos, according to the Christians, is Jesus who existed in the form of God the Almighty, and now he's becoming flesh in the human form. Therefore, Jesus is fully God and fully man. But is that the case? Why is the doctrine of Trinity so complicated, really? I mean, you have to like go to Dallas Theological Seminary for 80 years to figure it out, hold classes on this, explaining it, how to defend it. Why? Why, why, do you, why can't the five-year-old understand it? I mean, really, they can't. However, the Christians have such a tough time understanding this reality. What if Jesus is really not God? What's different and extraordinary about Jesus becoming flesh? Is it that big of a deal that Jesus becomes flesh? God the Almighty defines and introduces himself to us. In the Old Testament, the New Testament, and in the Quran as follows. Hosea chapter 11 verse 9 says, For I am God and not man. Numbers chapter 23 verse 19, God is not a man. Job chapter 9 verse 32, for he is not a man. Matthew chapter 9 verse 3 and 4, some teachers of the law of Moses said to themselves, Jesus must think he is God. But Jesus knew what was in their minds, and he said, why are you thinking such evil thinking? Jesus here indicating, thinking I am God is an evil thought. God the Almighty is pre-eternal, post-eternal, the first and the last. There is nothing, nobody similar or equal to and like him. He has no partners. 
His attributes come from his essence. He created everything. He was not created. He did not give birth and he was not born. He is free from space. That is, he is not limited with any place. He is everywhere. He is closer to everything than anything. Everything is infinitely far away from him. Very clear and cut. God the Almighty says, I am not a human being. I'm not sure what goes in the Christians' minds when these verses say, God is not a man. The point is that the, the reason it requires so much explanation is it's inexplicable. The, what Christians believe, they, they've inherited from their father. Sure. Throughout history, people worshipped animals, objects, nature, and humans, as in the case of Jesus, etc. Pagans and polytheists are known for practicing such rituals for which God the Almighty sent his many prophets and messengers to warn against such acts of worship that is considered a challenge against God the Almighty. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from shirk. Let us see if God the Almighty truly came down to earth and became a human in flesh. In the beginning, the Word was with God. We agree. The Word was with God. The Quran says Jesus was a Word from God. The Word is a messenger from God. Every prophet sent by God the Almighty was a Word from God since the beginning. We don't have any objection to this. But the Bible makes it exclusive to Jesus that he was a God with a capital G. Even though the original manuscript in Greek confirms Jesus was a godly in line with the Quranic narrative that says Jesus was a godly person, a righteous person, a messenger, and a prophet. But the Christians again are more confused. And now they say, but the word became flesh. Without understanding, as usual, their own Bible, they go for John chapter 1 verse 14. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. I'm not sure what makes this verse qualify as a proof for the Trinity. But it is often coded as if Jesus becoming flesh is a big deal. Yes, Jesus came out here to this world as flesh. You came out here to this life as a flesh. So do I. So is everyone in flesh and blood. How do you think you came out here to this life? As a monkey? That theory was debunked long time ago. You came out here to this life in flesh. Jesus also, as a word from God, the Almighty, came out here to this life as a flesh. He was a man in flesh, like you and I. But the Christians still insist. Nah, God the Almighty, the owner of the Day of Judgment, the most powerful, the omniscient, the all-knowing, came down to earth in flesh, in bodily form of his only begotten son, Jesus, and became a human being. What a mess. So you ask yourself a question. Would God have a doctor? That's so complicated that you need 40 advanced degrees to understand. Why? That means that simple people who didn't at attend Nyack Bible College don't really understand it unless they studied, they have a, at least a master's degree in theology. Why is it so complex? Indeed, these are some very powerful words the Christians utter when they say that Jesus is God or Son of God. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds in the Quran saying, وَقَالُوا اتَّخَذَ الرَّحْمَانُ وَلَدًا And they say, the most merciful has taken for himself a son. Meaning, God the Almighty has begotten a son. لَقَدْ جِئْتُمْ شَيْئًا إِدَّا You have done an atrocious thing. تَكَادُ السَّمَاوَاتُ يَتَفَطَّرْنَ مِنْهُ وَتَنْشَقُّ الْأَرْضُ وَتَخِرُّ الْجِبَالُ هَدَّا The heavens almost rupture therefrom. And the earth splits open and the mountains collapse in devastation. And da'u lirrahmani walada. 
that the attribute of spring to the Most High. وَمَا يَنْبَغِي لِلْرَحْمَانِ أَنْ يَتَّخِذَ وَلَدَ For it is not consonant with the majesty of Allah most gracious that he should beget a son. إِنَّ كُلُّ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ إِلَّا آتِ الرَّحْمَانِ عَبْدًا There is no one in the heavens and the earth but that he comes to the Most High, the Most Merciful, as a servant. لَقَدْ أَحْصَاهُمْ وَعَدَّهُمْ عَدَّ He has enumerated them and counted them a full counting. وَكُلُّهُمْ آتِيهِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ فَرْضًا And all of them are coming to him on the day of resurrection alone. Matter of fact, throughout the four canonical Gospels and the previous Gospels or the Scriptures, the Church Fathers omitted from being part of this Bible, such as the Gospel of Jesus. We see Jesus walks around telling people, you need to listen to my words. You need to listen to my teachings. You need to follow me if you want success in this life and the hereafter. He was explicit in his sayings when he declares the sayings are not mine. They are my father's sayings. My teachings are not mine. They belong to the father who sent me. This is his commandments. The father sent me to convey this message to you. So follow them. Father here. FYI, is an endearment and not a biological, biological term. God the Almighty in this sense is the father of all humanity. Jesus continued to function and act and speak as the word of God. We don't have a problem with that. We say it clearly that Jesus was the word from God, logos from God. You could very much say that this word logos is overlapping with the themes of God's knowledge and wisdom. Wisdom being God's plan. Knowledge being God's plan. You could even translate it as God's knowledge, God's plan, God's logos became flesh. There are a lot of my Christian brothers and sisters that look at John chapter 1 verse 14 and say, wow, the word actually becoming flesh. That God the Almighty, the Creator, the most powerful became this weak human being in flesh. That's something completely brand new to the Gospels, the Old Testament and the New Testament. The theology of God becoming a man is more like a Greek philosophy than anything. I would argue that what it means is simply God's plan, God's word, God's powerful speech, God's commandments, did get embodied in the human Jesus. It's very powerful and it demonstrates that Jesus functioned as a messenger according to God's plan in the form of flesh as we should expect him to be. Otherwise, imagine if Jesus and the other prophets came in the form of angels. For example, humanity wouldn't be able to communicate or handle them. Therefore, the flesh is what we are, and the prophets must be in the flesh, which correlates with our understanding and our ability to accept it based on our formation. So Jesus spoke the words of God, speaking the powerful words of God that have authority because they're God's words. They're not Jesus' words. All the prophets spoke the words of God, they're not theirs. But if you insist that Jesus is God the Almighty, that became flesh in the form through the Virgin Mary, I'm going to entertain you for a minute. The stomach for this, do it. You could look at the Nicene Creed and you have it, the doctrine on the nature of the Father, nature of the Son, nature of the Holy Spirit. Notice how short the description is of the Father. The simple few sentences at the end of it. Skip the Son and go to the Holy Spirit? That's such a bit. Go to the one with the Son. It's a whole long thing. And he's light, a very light. And on and on. And on. This whole elongated spread out. It's huge. 
why do you need so much description in order to explain this idea of what exactly is Jesus' nature? Why? Because it's like throwing a hundred darts at a target. Hopefully one lands. Yakety, 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 yakety. <laughs> Consider Luke chapter 24, verse 36. It says, While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be up in you, or peace be with you. So the disciples got shocked and scared when Jesus greeted them, Shalom alaykum. Assalamu alaikum, because they thought he was crucified. Remember, we don't have a single witness to the crucifixion of Jesus. I challenge biblical scholars and doctors of divinity to bring me one, only one witness to the crucifixion of Jesus. Only one. One should be sufficient for me to consider Christianity is true and valid. All his disciples fled the scene because they were afraid according to the Bible. So, they thought he was some sort of a boogeyman in a nightmare. Jesus is telling them, this is not Halloween. Relax. Since all of them fled the scene, no one witnessed what happened. They thought he was crucified. And they believed not for joy. He told them, handle me and see. Handle my hands, my feet, and see, for a spirit has no flesh and bones like I have. It means he has flesh. We agree. A spirit has no flesh or bones, indicating he was not a spirit. He was flesh. He was not crucified. He was alive. And he said, do you have anything to eat? And they gave him honeycomb, and he ate. To prove what? That he was not God. That he was not crucified. That he is still alive. Jesus says, I'm calling Jesus, my father is greater than I. My father is greater than all. I can of my own self do nothing. I'm calling Jesus, right? Do you think Jesus said these things? How about Hebrews, Corinthians, Philippians, Galatians, Catalonians, did you ever ask yourself, who are these people? Jesus? It's Paul, 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 and Paul. I want to know what my beloved Jesus said. Because I want to follow Jesus, not Paul. Because I love Jesus and I want to follow his teachings. Not what someone else thinks Jesus meant or what his teachings might have been. My salvation does not depend on someone else's interpretations of the scriptures. Jesus says, the word you hear are not mine, but the Father that sent me. He who does not love me does not keep my words. And the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. John chapter 24, verse 24. What Jesus spoke during his lifetime is the truth. And we as a Muslim, Muslims abide with that. And what he did not speak is the work of man, and we reject it. Hopefully, this is an eye-opening for some and blessing to some others. And thank you for watching. I look forward to seeing you in my next videos. I have some very interesting books that I would love to share with you. And one of them is the Gospels. If you have any questions, please comment. Don't hesitate to ask in the comment section. I will do my best to reply respectfully, no matter how much we disagree with each other. Till then, we use the greeting of Jesus. Peace be upon you. Shalom alaykum. Wassalamu alaykum.